If you're looking for a user-friendly tool to create your own online community or membership, then I'm excited to introduce you to Circle, an all-in-one community platform for creators, coaches, and entrepreneurs. With Circle, you can build a home for your community, your events, and your online courses all in one place and all under your own brand. So in this review, I plan to walk through these three essentials. First, I'll show you how to create your own community in Circle including options to add your own unique mix of spaces for things like discussions, events, chat, and courses. Second, I'll dive deeper into course creation to show you exactly how to add lessons and create an online course in Circle. And this will work whether you want to create a membership with a vault of online courses, or you want to sell online courses with community or live call elements. Then third, I'll show you how to invite new members into your community and keep them engaged, including how to collect payments and some bonus tips on how I build a paid course or community from scratch. First, let's create and name your new Circle community. To get started, you'll visit witandwire.com slash circle. And for transparency, that is my partner link. And although this video is sponsored by Circle, I've been a paying customer since the beginning. And as a fun fact, I actually used to work with two of the co-founders, Sid and Andy, when we were all at Teachable. And I think they've built an incredible team and a great product. So I'm excited to show it off. From here, you'll click get started where you can create a free 14 day trial without a credit card. I'll add my name, email, and password here and meet you on the next page. Here, you'll be prompted to name your community. And I recommend using your business name or maybe adding a word to the end like members, students, hub, or portal. You can also choose your community URL, but after onboarding, you could also use a custom domain. So for example, rather than using a circle.so domain, in my own Wit and Wire community, I've used circle.witandwire.com. And again, you can configure that in settings after onboarding. The last decision you'll make here is if you want to have a public or private community. If you toggle this on, this will be a private community. And if you have paid members and students as the primary users of your community, then I would recommend that you make it private so that everyone needs to be invited in order to gain access. With a public community, that might make more sense if you have some free members or if you are building a fully free community. So you can change any of these decisions later, but for now I'll click next and meet you in the dashboard. Here's your first preview of your new circle community. And before we continue, I want you to know that you can always use this chat icon on the bottom to search through help articles or contact the circle team. Next, let's set up your user profile. On the top right corner, you can click this icon and then edit profile. And here you're prompted to add a profile photo and some information. So I'll go ahead and fill this out. Now you can see my photo, my bio, and just a few links. And these will be visible to other members in the member directory. So I'm gonna save changes to lock those in and show you the directory. In Circle, by the way, you'll always wanna wait for that check mark to appear to know that your changes have been saved. So let's close out of this. And then on the side, you can see members. And this is where all of your future member profiles will appear so that your members can connect. I also wanna briefly mention the other three member icons in the top right corner, which you and your members will all be able to see. You'll all have a bell icon to show your latest notifications, and you can change those settings here anytime. You'll have the direct message icon where you can send messages to fellow members of the community, and you'll have the bookmarks icon. And you can bookmark posts or lessons throughout the community and revisit them later on here. Next, let's customize the branding of your Circle community. As an admin in this Circle community, you will see a dropdown right here next to the name of your community, which is not visible to members. And if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see customize theme. Here you can see that you can customize the colors uniquely in both light mode and dark mode. And you can choose the default, but your members will have the option to switch back and forth. I'm gonna stick with light mode. And here I could upload a logo and or an icon, and the logo would replace the name of your community while the icon would go before it and as in the uh, community switcher as well. So for today, let me just upload a logo to show you where that would go. Now that our logo is in place, we can scroll further down to customize the colors. You have a few different options. You can either set the brand color and button text and keep things simple, or you can select something from the pre-built list of color combinations. So maybe I might choose milkshake, or the third option is create a custom theme. And here you can set hex codes for different parts of your circle community and really make it match your existing business's brand to make it feel like it's all cohesive and all part of one bigger business. For today, I do think I will just stick with maybe Beach City and I'll click save on the top to lock in those changes. 
Next, let's talk about space groups, spaces, and links. In the sidebar, if you hover, you can see a plus icon and you can add a space group, which is a label, almost like a folder for individual spaces that all go together. So as an example, let's add a space group and maybe we'll call this welcome and click create. Now we can add individual spaces within the welcome group. Now, before we do that on the bottom, you'll also notice a links area. And if you add something to the links area, this is more like a bookmark to something external. So maybe I would add contact us and then I would add a link to the contact page on Wit & Wire's website. By default, you'll see links for your users to download the Circle Android app or iOS app, and you can keep those here or you can hover over these to delete them, but I'm gonna keep them for the rest of our demo. Next, I wanna show you the different types of spaces you can add in Circle. In the sidebar, let's click the plus icon and add a space. And here you'll see the six active types of spaces you can currently add to your Circle community. After you choose a type, you can't change it later because the settings in each of these different spaces are very different. But you can always add new spaces and very few things are permanent in your Circle community. So let's talk about the differences. A post space is like a traditional forum. Or if you think of a social media feed where people can add comments and likes, that would be a post. Next, we have events where your members can RSVP to upcoming events and add them to their calendar. The next space type is chat. And this is more like WhatsApp or a Slack group. So rather than individual posts, this is a chat log where your members can engage in discussion. The next space type is a course where you add individual lessons grouped into sections, just like a traditional course platform. By the way, I'm gonna show you a preview of all of these coming up. But for now, the last two space types are members, which would create a smaller member directory of just the members who have access and images, which is more like a portfolio or visual feed. Now that we've covered the differences, let's add our first space, starting with a post space. To get started, you'll click the plus icon on the sidebar and click add space. And we're gonna move forward with a post space. Let's give it a name and maybe we'll start with introductions. And you can also change the icon here into an emoji or any of these shapes of different colors. So maybe for today, we'll go with the wave emoji. And then the other crucial decision you'll make here is about access. There are three access levels for every space in Circle. If it's open, then anyone in the community can join. If it's private, then only invited members can join, but other members can see it in the sidebar and they would see a locked screen if they haven't been invited. The third access level is secret, which means that the space is only visible to the members who have been invited. All three serve different purposes, but since we're building the introduction space where people say hello, I'm gonna choose open since my hunch is that everyone in our community would have access to this space. So let's go ahead and click create. Here's our first look at our new post space. So you can see introductions in the sidebar. You can see the discussion area here and an optional right sidebar, which you can enable or disable. And just to give you a pro tip, after you add a new space, you can click the drop down menu here and go into customize to see additional settings. So in a post space, if I scroll further down, you can change the layout from feed to list or card view. And you can also decide if you wanna keep the sidebar on or off on the right side or add a cover image. And maybe we'll just upload something from Unsplash as an example. Let's go ahead with this mountain view just for today. And then on the bottom, we will click save changes to lock that in. And you can see that this is where the cover photo would appear if you chose to add one. By the way, if you're finding this circle tutorial helpful, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to Quit and Wire for more simplified online business tutorials. Next, let's write a post in circle. Now we're ready to add our first post. On the top right, you can see new post and your members will see this too. So let's click new post and maybe I'll say, hey, I'm Melissa. And then in this area, you can use the icons along the bottom, or you can use the backslash key to see a series of different blocks you can use for your post. So you can use basic text blocks like paragraph, headings, or lists. You can also mention other people. You can do some pretty cool things like polling, adding files, adding or embedding videos, and there are a ton of different options down here below, or a personal favorite on the bottom. I like to add a nice GIF here and there. But for now, my bio would go here, 
And for now, let's just publish this post so you can see what it looks like. This brings me directly to the landing page for the post itself. But if I go back to introductions, now you can see my first post here. By default, you'll also see that members can like and comment on each other's posts. But as a pro tip, there might be other spaces where you wanna change some of these settings. So in Circle, it's very customizable. And as one example, maybe you add an announcements space, but only admins can post. So members wouldn't see the new post button on the top right. That's just one example, but hopefully you can start to see just how personal you can make your circle community. Next, let's add an event space. In the sidebar, you'll see I added a space group called Course Builders. And this is one of our Wit & Wire programs that has a weekly group coaching call. So what I'm gonna do is click the plus icon to add a space and choose event space to add a group coaching calendar. So let's click next and we'll call this group coaching and we can change the icon. Maybe for today, we'll use the calendar icon. And because this is only available to students in the program, I'm gonna make this a secret space. So let's go ahead and click create. Now we have our empty calendar. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add new event. I'm gonna call this course builders coaching. And here you can select the date and time and decide if this event repeats. Because this is a weekly event, I'm going to choose that it repeats every week let me actually set this first. So let's pretend that it took place on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. And we can set this up to repeat every Tuesday. And it doesn't end anytime soon, but for now, as an example, maybe I was running a program that had three months of group coaching. So maybe we'll add 12 for now. Then we need to choose our location. So you might choose a URL and provide your external Zoom URL here, or instead you might choose to use Circle Livestream or Circle Live Room. A live stream is more like a webinar where you, the presenter, are on stage and the rest of the attendees are in the chat. A live room is more like Zoom where you can have a speaker or gallery view. For a coaching call, I think live room makes more sense and I'll stick with the gallery view. I also definitely want to record it and I'd love to automatically post recording to the event afterwards to save myself a step. I'm gonna lock this in for now as a draft. And on the next page, you can see all of that information is now on the basic info tab, but I'm gonna head over to post details and maybe I would add a brief description here. So maybe just group coaching information and we will click save. Now I'm gonna apply this to all of the events because I did create a series. So let's click accept, wait for the check mark to appear and click publish. Again, all events. And now we can close out of this and click OK. And I'm going to refresh the page to see our new events. Here you can see the next event is featured on the top and below I can see all of my upcoming events. Now, what we're seeing in the gray is a placeholder for a thumbnail, but I'm gonna go ahead into the space settings and click customize. And I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna change this to list view just to simplify things a bit and take out the step of having to create a thumbnail for each event. I think it's an amazing feature, but for those of us trying to get up and running more quickly, I think this is just a bit faster to remove that step. So I'll click save changes and now you can see what it would look like without the thumbnail. Then let's say somebody clicks into an individual event this is what's called the event page. And this is where you can see the details. And this is also where the recording will be automatically added after the event. On the side, you can see that your members have the option to add this to their calendar and they can attend when it is time for the event. Let's also preview what it looks like to go live in Circle. This event is not yet ready to go live. So instead, I'll just click go live on the bottom corner to show you what it looks like. I'm going to start a live room here. Again, you can see the difference is that a room is more like Zoom, a live stream is more like a webinar. So let's click next and I'm going to call this YouTube demo and we will record it and keep these settings as is and click next. We aren't going to invite everyone. It'll be a lonely live stream, but we'll go ahead and test the video and allow access here. And we should be up and running to start our room. Now on the bottom of the screen, you'll see different settings. So I can change my microphone or camera. I can turn things on and off. I could share my screen and I can see the chat on the side, or I could change the view here from speaker to gallery view. So this should look pretty familiar. Again, this is automatically recording. And when we end the room, the recording will end up under your settings. And if you had an event where in the group coaching example, we set it up to automatically post the recording, you would see it on the event page a little bit after the event ends. Next, 
next, let's create an online course in your Circle community. There are so many ways you can organize your space groups and your spaces. So maybe what I wanna do is create a space group and call it courses. So I'm going to put all of my courses within this group, just as one example, maybe I have a membership with a course vault. You can also drag and drop these around anytime, very easy to do. And for our example, let's add a space and choose a course space and click next. And I'm gonna build a self-paced course. You also have the option to drip your content out over time. Perhaps new content is released every week, new curriculum. That would be a structured course. Or scheduled courses would release certain content on certain dates. But I'll keep things simple today with a self-paced course and click next. I'm gonna call this course builders. And again, you could choose a different emoji and maybe I would choose the tools emoji and click create. Now you can see the admin view of this course. When you do have students, you'll see their info here and you'll see their progress, what percentage of the course they've completed. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and click edit lessons to start building out our curriculum. In circle, you can add sections that house individual lessons. So I'm gonna add a section and maybe I would call this profitable idea. And let's add one more section as an example, and we'll call that course planning. Then I'll add just a few demo lessons. So let's do the bridge theory. Let's add brainstorm your course outcome. And let's add choose your ideal student. And you'll notice that these are all in draft mode until you publish them. And in fact, the entire course is a draft until you decide to publish it. Next, let's edit an individual lesson. So I'm gonna click edit lesson here. And this brings us into Circle's lesson editor. On the top, you'll see an area for featured media, typically a video. So you can either upload a video here or you can embed one if it's housed in one of their compatible third-party platforms. So I'm gonna click upload and choose a file from my computer. After a few seconds, our video is available and you'll notice it's a temporary preview. We haven't published the course yet, so this is a normal warning message. If you'd like, you could hover over the video and replace the thumbnail here, but that's up to you. Then below the video, you can add more info. So you could add details here just by typing, or if you use the backslash key, you'll see the same block menu that we saw when we added a post. And that consistency is one of the things that I really appreciate about Circle. I think it makes it really user-friendly. So you could add one of the basic text blocks, or I wanna show you how you can add a downloadable to this lesson by choosing to upload a file. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a PDF from my computer. You can see our PDF down below, but I also wanna show you the option to add a file here on the sidebar, and I'll show you the difference when we preview this lesson. So let me click add file and put the same PDF here. Now we have our PDF in both places. And before we preview this lesson, I wanna go back to general to also show you the option to enable or disable comments in any lesson to encourage discussion. So now that we have that locked in, I have published this lesson and let's save those changes. And now we can click view lesson to go into the student preview. On the side, you can see the outline of the course. And here you can see our lesson just as we built it before. Now, since I mentioned the PDFs, you'll notice this PDF I think is very visible and accessible, but the other PDF is here under the folder icon on the right. I think both could work really well for different course creators, but you might have a preference for one or the other. To just briefly talk about these icons, this chat icon brings up the comments bar, which would be enabled when this course is published. This is the course outline. Here we covered the files, and this icon would allow students to bookmark this lesson to come back to it later. Let's also head back into the course, and I'm going to close out of this and show you that although we are seeing the admin view, I want to click this menu to show you this course in the student or member view. So when your member clicks into this course on the sidebar, they will see the outline of the course like this, and they can click into any individual lesson to get to the view where we just were before. If we head back into our community, you'll notice we have our course space here, but all of the courses that your student has access to will appear here on their courses tab as well. And if you'd like to add a thumbnail, let's just head briefly back into our course. You can head under customize and you can add a thumbnail here to the bottom. Now that we've added a few spaces, I also wanna talk about the power of the search bar. On the top, this search bar is powerful for both you and members. 
You can go back and see if you had prior discussions or lessons on a certain topic, or maybe your student remembers that there was something about the bridge theory, they just don't remember where. And now they can see that there is a lesson called the bridge theory and more easily move around. Or perhaps they were curious about past discussions on a topic, maybe they searched through posts. I think it's just great not only for you to know how to use the search bar, but also to empower your members to use the search bar as well. After you build your starter community, it's time to invite members. There are a few different ways you can do this. First, let's head under this dropdown and I'm gonna click members. Here you can manage your members and once you start to add people, you'll see them all on the list here. Then you have a few options to invite members to your community. So first let's click invite where you could add an individual or you could bulk import from a CSV file. You can also customize the email invitation that they might receive, and you can decide which spaces they should immediately get access to. So next, I wanna talk about how you can collect payments through paywalls in Circle. Here on the left, I've clicked the paywall icon, and you do have to connect Stripe first before you see the option to create paywall on the top. I'm gonna to make a fictional course creator membership, and I'm going to click next to focus on pricing and access. When you click add price, you can choose a one-time fee, a subscription, or installments. And the difference is that subscription would continue until the member decides to stop paying and would lose access, while an installment is more like a payment plan. So there would be a set number of payments over a set amount of time, like six payments of X amount of money. For today, let's make a subscription, and maybe they are billed monthly for $100. We'll click save. And maybe we also have another price point where they have a subscription to choose annual pricing for $1,000, which would give them two months free in this case. Next, you would also choose their access level. So if they pay this membership fee, what should they get access to? And maybe in this case, they would just get access to one area of the community or two. So maybe they're in the, the welcome space and the space group rather for a specific program. So with those two in place, I'm gonna kind of skim through the post purchase and tracking options to click publish. Now what I'm gonna do is click copy link just to show you a preview of the checkout page that we just created. Here you can see the checkout page has my logo, the name of the product, and the two payment options. If I had added a description, it would have shown up here. And then your member can add their payment info and click pay to join and immediately get access to any of the space groups and spaces that you decided to give them access to. I also wanna talk about a fun feature called member tags. Member tags are like badges, which can add a lot of fun and interaction to your circle community. So if you head under this drop-down menu and you go to members, let's head to member tags, and maybe we create a new member tag for somebody who hits their first 10K as a course creator. And maybe for the icon, they get a medal. And you can also choose to give that a colored background. So maybe we'll pick blue for today. And you can customize these settings. You might just have the icon instead of the full name. That's what the tooltip means. But for today, we'll choose the whole label. And since I'm the only member here, I will gladly accept this badge. But you could do badges that reward interaction in the community or milestones within the programs that you have. So let's head back here. And now you can see the 10K badge listed next to my name. And you would also see it if I clicked onto my profile. You can also see a variety of analytics in your Circle community. So in the menu, you can head over to this graph icon to see your analytics as an overview, or you can focus in on members, spaces, posts, or messages messages. And here you can see things like your monthly active members over time, your new members, the popular times and popular days to post. So you can get a lot of great info here that might inform changes or updates you'll make to your community to continue to encourage engagement. Let's also talk about Circle's plans and pricing. If you head to witnwire.com circle and you head to the pricing tab, you'll see three different tiers. And if you scroll down, you'll also notice that there is a basic plan. You can compare all of the features below, but just to highlight a few key features, the professional plan is likely the one you would want to budget for if you're gonna use Circle long-term, because this is where you get courses, the ability to live stream, and the full functionality of the custom branding and reporting. So I do think that this is where most Circle admins will end up. But again, you can compare all of the features here to see if the basic plan might make better sense for you when you're just getting started. You might also wonder how Circle stacks up against the competition. So let's compare a few of the most popular community platforms, starting with Circle versus Mighty Networks. 
Mighty Networks is a well-known community platform and their price structure is nearly identical to Circle's. That said, I've been a member in a few Mighty Networks communities and as a personal preference, I find them tougher to navigate. The dashboard feels more crowded and cluttered to me, so although many users are happy with Mighty Networks, I find Circle much simpler to use as both an admin and as a community member. Let's also compare Circle versus Heartbeat. Heartbeat is a newer platform that also includes community threads, events, and courses. And as of the time of this recording, they have a $49 per month plan with all core features and up to 1,000 members. So by comparison, that makes them a great budget alternative to Circle, although again, you might prefer the look and feel of one platform over the other. I'm also often asked about Circle versus School, and there are two crucial differences that might be deal breakers. First, School was built as a community marketplace. So your community will live on School's website and they don't currently plan to allow businesses to use custom domains. Second, every school community has only one discussion space for all members at this price point. So if you have two or more programs which need separate discussions, you'd have to create and pay for two separate school communities. Those happen to be two deal breaker features for me personally, but for other business owners, it could be worth exploring. You might also be thinking about Circle versus Facebook groups. Truthfully, I think free Facebook groups can work really well for lead attraction. But on the other hand, I find them distracting and tough to keep updated when they're part of a paid course or membership. So although it might make sense to use Facebook to test the waters, over time, I think most business owners will be better off using a true community platform like Circle to run their paid courses and communities just because it has a better overall user experience and it's built under your own brand. To offer a quick bonus tip, the best way to launch a new product like a course or a community is often to adopt an MVP mentality. MVP is short for minimum viable product. And in the tech world, the MVP is the very first version of an app or platform that goes out to the earliest users. And it only includes the minimum amount of necessary features needed to make the product work. Then the company will iterate and improve over time as their user base grows. And you can do exactly the same thing with your circle community. So maybe ask yourself, what are the must have essentials that I need for my first buyers? Because that can help keep things simple to start and you'll naturally grow and evolve over time. As a second tip, it's a myth that you need a huge audience or a ton of members to get started. Whether you want to sell a membership or a community powered course, you can often start smaller with even 10 people to create a meaningful experience. So ask yourself, who can you serve? What outcome are they trying to reach? And what minimum viable amount of features do you need to create in order to get them there? If you're interested in learning more about how to start and scale a profitable online course business, I have a free masterclass for new course creators at witandwire.com slash course masterclass. You'll also find the link in the description where you'll also see that link to start your free 14 day trial with circle by visiting witandwire.com slash circle. I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to wit and wire. If you found this walkthrough helpful, and if you're curious to learn more, here's another video I think you might enjoy.